Welcome to Colorado College in the Venus Great Hall. Thank you each for coming out this morning to present your Creek Watch projects, to present your Yes Club projects. You've done a lot of hard work. Um, I'm Tracy Jackson. I'm the Education Director at Catamount Institute. I'm going to introduce a very special guest speaker this morning. We have nationally known caver and inventor to tell you a pretty incredible short story that has a lot to do with you. Um, so let me introduce David Jackson, inventor and caver. Here you go. Good morning. Good morning. What does it look like I just came out of? A cave. A cave, exactly. Or mine, yep. A cave, that's right. So, you can remember my name, I'm Dave from a cave. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna tell you a story this morning, and this story is about one of these. A shovel, yes. Raise your hand if you have ever used a shovel. Okay, keep your hands up. Raise your other hand if you have ever dug a really deep hole. All right, very good. So when I was a kid, back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, <laughs> I used to dig really deep holes. And my parents would take me to the beach. Can you guys see this picture behind me? If you can't see, you can scoot left or right. Because there are going to be a lot of pictures. So I used to dig until I couldn't dig anymore, because I would get to the water. And when it snowed at our house, I would dig snow caves. And when it wasn't snowing, I would dig holes in the backyard. My parents only let me dig holes in one place, and that was under my fort. So I would dig these deep, deep holes. I need two volunteers. Raise your hands. All right, you come on up. And, yep, come on up. All right, so you crouch down like that. So I dug a hole that was about up to here. And then I started going horizontally. So the hole was like this, and then it went, and you could crouch underneath, inside the hole. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. There's only one problem with digging tunnels. Is it safe? No. Not very, no. So my parents decided that we should fill a hole in. I thought it was a good idea too. You guys can sit down, thanks. I thought it was a good idea too to fill a hole in because it was filled with mushrooms, which I thought were really icky. <laughs> so we filled the hole in. Here's a picture of what can happen to you if you're not careful with holes. This person is buried in sand and they can't get out. All right. So when I got older, I went to college, sort of like Colorado College, except different on the East Coast. And I worked really, really hard so that I could learn a lot of cool stuff and do cool projects. In addition to working hard, I joined a caving club. Here's a picture from a cave that I went in. Can you see what the person is in? A helmet, yep. Yes? She, um, that person's in a cave. Exactly, and it's filled with water. It's really hard to see, but the water is up to here. So this is Gage's Cave in New York. And when I was in the caving club, I learned a bunch of stuff that you guys probably already know. I learned that water is important for caves. What does water help caves do? Yes? Yeah? Exactly, it carves through the cave. It helps to make the cave, yes. And caves do something to help water, to make it better to drink, yes. It adds minerals to it? It adds minerals, yep, and it cleans the water, yes. So I learned about water in caves. I also learned about safety in caves. I was caving one time and somebody got stuck. And you know what I had to do? I had to take my helmet off and I had to dig them out with my helmet. So, when we moved here to Colorado, we saw other caves, and we saw cool formations like I'd never seen before. So do you guys know what is on the left? Raise your hands. 
Yes? Of um, It's actually cave bacon. It's hard to see in the picture. But it's close. Yep. All right. And on the right is a helictite. It's called a helictite because a helix is something that twists. And these formations sort of twist. All right. And maybe when you guys grow up, you will figure out how these formations are made because science still does not understand exactly how these formations are made. So the other thing that we did when we moved to Colorado, remember the digging with the helmet? Remember how I told you somebody got stuck and had to dig with the helmet? I decided that I needed to take a cave rescue training class. Here's a picture. Oops. Here's a picture. Can you see this? Those of you who can't see it, what do you see? A guy on a stretcher, exactly. Yes, so when you do cave rescue training, you strap a person into a litter like this, and you carry them through a cave. So the cave rescue was two days long. And on the first day, we did an above ground practice. And I have a video that shows you all about the above ground practice. On the second day, we went in a cave. So let's look at the practice day. Like most cave rescue trainings, our above ground practice included navigating a jumble of picnic tables with a patient in a sketch. I found that there were a few problems with this. The rescuers tended to brush the flagging tape formations out of the way. As you may know, there are some differences between wobbling picnic tables and real cave passage. So that was our above ground practice. Did you guys see what we were crawling through? Yeah. Picnic tables, yes. Do those look like caves? No. Not at all. Are they safe? No. no, they're really wobbly. Did you see that we had fake cave formations that were orange tape? Yeah. yeah. People were wrecking those, pushing them out of the way. They weren't learning about how to take care of the cave. So the next day, we went underground. And we did a practice that looked kind of like this. And what happened is that some of the people who were doing the rescue hurt the cave because they hadn't learned how to take care of the cave. And they brushed up against really delicate formations, which take a really long time to grow, and they wrecked some of them. So I decided, I looked at this problem, just like you guys looked at problems when you were working on your projects, Right, you looked at problems with caves and bats and water, things that could be improved or fixed, and you thought about those problems and you decided to do something about it. So I decided to do something about this, and I made this. Do any of you recognize this? Who've maybe been through, yes. Yeah. Cave sim, exactly. Yes, a few yes clubs have been through cave sim. And this is someone from where? Does anybody recognize this person? Tracy's Yes Club might. This is someone from Manitou Elementary School crawling through Cave Sim the other day. And Cave Sim, the entrance looks like this. Cave Sim is a crawl through fake cave. And you go in on the left where it says entrance and you crawl for 50 feet and then you come out on the right side at the exit. And the goal is to not hit the fake cave formations. You see on the left side in the entrance? Yeah. On the floor, what is that? Yes? What is it on the floor? Yes? Uh, it's a stalactite and uh, stuff like that, cave stuff. Yep, exactly. On the ceiling is a stalactite and on the floor is a stalagmite. Yeah, so these are really cool. It's like a video game. So if you hit the formations, they beep at you, and there's a computer, and it shows you what you hit. So you go through, and you come out, and you look at your score when you're done. So we took our cave simulator to the rescue training, the next one, and people crawled through it, and they carried someone through in a litter on a stretcher. And we're going to see a video about that. There's a person in the orange thing. You're dragging them through. Again, the person in the orange thing. Oh, he hit his head. He hit his head on the formation. 
but it beeped at him, and he got a damage point. And the cool thing about that was that the next day we did our underground practice, and do you think we heard anything? No. no, we did not. Nothing was hurt. So that was really good. No cave formations were damaged. So people clearly learned. We've had a lot of people go through. So we've had 50 search and rescue people, that's like firemen and things like that, go through. And we've also had many, many kids go through. So over a thousand people have gone through, and we've taken it to various places like Glenwood Springs, and we're going to take it to West Virginia this summer. And wherever we go, it's not just crawling through. We also talk to people, like you guys are going to do with your presentations. You're going to talk to people and explain things about caves and bats and water and underground. So here I am talking to people, teaching them about caves. And I still dig holes in my yard. Except that this one was to put in a pipe. And now I'm more careful. Do you see the white thing? That's to hold the dirt up to keep it from collapsing. And of course, we go caving. And this is really close to here. This is in Williams Canyon, which is on in Manitou. And we even do cave rescue. This is a recent cave rescue that we did in Alabama. And there I am in the blue thing and the yellow helmet, talking to a lady who fell and hurt her leg because she forgot the, my rule of caving, which is gravity still applies underground. <laughs> so you can't jump and stuff like that. It's not good. So thank you all for coming here and presenting your projects. There's one thing that I want to remind you, and that is that your projects are just like the cave simulator, right? You looked at a problem, and you thought about what you're good at, and you decided to use what you are good at to solve a problem. Some of you did art, some of you did writing, right? Some of you did gluing and cutting and painting, things like that, research. So as you continue on with your lives, make sure that you always use your creativity to solve problems. All right, I have time for about three questions. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, can you go cave diving? Do I go cave diving? No, I don't go cave diving. Everybody has their limits. <laughs> Caving is a challenge by choice activity. That means there are lots of challenges and you choose which ones you think are safe to do. So I don't do cave diving. Yes. I have probably, this is the, the only formal rescue that I've done, but if you count the digging out with the helmet, and if you count the time that somebody had an allergic reaction to a cliff bar and their tongue swelled up, then that's three times. <laughs> and I was, I was glad I was carrying Benadryl. Yes? Oh, that's a great question. I had to put a pipe in, in in this picture because we live on top of granite and granite has radium in it. Radium is radioactive and it generates gas that's very bad for you. And you can't smell it and you can't see it and you can't taste it and it pools in your basement. It's called radon. Some of your parents might know about it. And I decided to put in a radon system that sucks the gas away and makes the house safer. So that's why I didn't put it in the pipe. Unrelated to caving. So, okay, one more question and then we're done. Where was I in the picture after that? That's a great question. I was in Hucka Cove Cave, also known as Huckies, which is in Williams Canyon, which is in Manitou, really close to here. And I was coming up out of a very small hole in the floor. All right, so I'm gonna turn things back over to Tracy and Good job with your projects, and have fun today. Woo